What does it mean to digitize your lettering and why would you even want to? Hey, I'm Becca with The Happy Ever Crafter, and in this video, I'm gonna show you the super simple broken down process to digitizing your lettering because it is a super handy skill to know if you do lettering and calligraphy, and it's not rocket science. Before we jump in though, I wanna explain why you would even want to digitize your lettering. Basically, digitizing, or you might hear it called vectorizing, is what you would do to be able to resize and manipulate your lettering and calligraphy, or be able to put it on things. For example, let's say you wanted to write something on paper and then put it onto a mug or a t-shirt or something like that. It needs to be digitized for you to do that. Digitizing essentially means that you can resize it and change it without affecting the quality of it. You can stretch it, you can do whatever you want, which you can't do if you just take a picture of it and try and put it on something. It's also what you would do if you wanted to use your lettering as a font or maybe as titles in a document or maybe as headings on your website or anything like that. You would need to have it digitized to be able to do that. Personally, I use digitizing most so that I can write things small in my hand lettering and then I can digitize them, bring them onto the computer and use it to create layouts and to set up all of the designs for my bigger signage projects without having to make it really big and do a ton of measurements. It saves me so much time. Quick caveat here that I'm gonna be showing you how to do this on Adobe Illustrator. If you don't have Adobe Illustrator, I highly, highly, highly recommend getting it as an investment for yourself and for your business if you're doing this kind of thing regularly because it is a wonderful program for everything you need it to do. If you don't have it, you can even just sign up for a trial first and give this a go. So let's say I'm doing a project for a couple named Jason and Sarah and they want their names really big on a big sign for their wedding. Okay, so I'm using marker paper with a little bit of graph paper underneath so that I have guidelines. And I'm essentially just going to write out all the words that I want to use on my sign in my normal lettering. And I'm not paying attention to the layout of them at all. I'm essentially just drawing all of these words individually. They don't have to be placed any way special. And then once I get them onto the computer, that's when I'm going to start placing them in relation to each other. And then I'm also going to do different versions of the word and. So I've got ampersands, I have essentially like a cute little plus sign, and then I'm also just gonna write the word and in calligraphy and um, this like little swirl with a banner kind of thing. I generally use one of these designs for welcome signs and essentially I just like to have them all digitized so that I can decide which one looks best with my layout. So I write them all out first and then bring them onto the computer and decide which one I like best. Once I have all the words written that I'm gonna want and I'm happy with the way they look individually, I take out the graph paper so that I can take a really clear picture of it on my phone. And then I'm gonna go into the editing version on my phone and I'm gonna up the contrast and the brightness and make sure that it's just as close to black and white as I possibly can. So I'm putting up the exposure, I'm putting up this highlights button, and then I'm gonna actually also put the contrast really, really high. It's hard to tell on the screen, but it looks a lot brighter. The white is brighter and the black is darker in this version. And the last thing I'm gonna do is airdrop it to my phone, and then I can show you how this works on the computer. Okay, so once I have this on my computer, I've opened it up in Illustrator, and this is what it looks like. Again, you can tell it's pretty black and white because I had upped all of the contrast and stuff on my phone, but I'm just gonna rotate it to 90 degrees so that it makes sense in my brain and resize it so it fits on my artboard or a, your page, basically. They just call it an artboard. And then I'm gonna go to this image trace button. Make sure you have your item selected and then it will pop up and you can just hit the default option for image trace. And then when you click on this little menu button, it gives you options for the threshold and that's like how detailed it's gonna be. So if you drag this up and down, you can see how the lettering sort of changes. So on the low end of it, it goes thinner and on the high end, it goes thicker. You kinda of wanna find the option where it's gonna be the least work to edit. So when I say edit, I mean like you can see sort of the edges are choppy. So find the spot where it's the least work and then hit expand. Expand kind of finalizes it. And then you're gonna hit ungroup. 
then you can see these blue lines around it. And if you select the background and hit delete, it deletes the background so that just your words are there. So I'm gonna also go and delete all of these little spots that are within a circle, because those are background. You wanna get rid of anything background. And just I'm just hitting delete as I do this. So anywhere that there's a little spot that would be filled in, I would delete. And now if I click on each word, you can see it's individual and I can resize it and the quality of it doesn't change. So you can play with this as much as you want at this point. You can make it as big or as small as you want. You can rotate things. You can do whatever you need. But if you zoom in on it, you can still tell that some of the edges are pretty rough. So what you need to do when you digitize is hit this second pointer button. And when you click on your words, you'll see all these little anchor points show up. And now what you're gonna do is use the smooth tool and you can go and just run that smooth tool along the edges and it's essentially gonna delete some of the anchor points and straighten out some of the lines. It's such a satisfying thing to do. It really cleans up your lettering. This can be a little bit tedious at first. Um, it just takes a while sometimes depending how bad the lettering was. So the neater you can make it on paper, the better, but you're always gonna need to do this a little bit. So just take your time, even it out wherever you feel like you need to. And in this instance, um, as you're working through this, Control Z is always a good um, button to know. It's the undo button. So if you ever hit, hit the smooth button too many times or you don't like the way it worked, you can hit Control Z and undo what you just did. But go around and digitize all of your word. And then once you're finished, you can unclick it and you'll see how much smoother everything looks. One of the things I also like to do is drag a ruler down. So if you press Control R, you'll get a ruler at the top of your, in, your Illustrator and you can drag it down to create yourself a straight line. And then I rotate my lettering to make sure it's perfectly straight because often when you take a picture, you don't get it on the right angle. Next, I'm gonna just move things around and start resizing and start playing with my layout because now I have everything digitized and I can move things around as I please and see what my favorite layout is. So I essentially just take things, drag them around, put them in different configurations, copy, um, copy paste and play with different things, try each of the different ampersands and the words and that I used and just make different layouts. So I'm just doing a lot of copy paste here, a lot of deleting things and switching it out for other things and just kind of seeing what makes the most sense for the sign that I wanna create. And I just keep playing with this until I'm happy with it. And often I'll come up with multiple options. So in this case, I end up with four different options that I like. And sometimes I'll even bring it to the client and say, which one is your preference? And then I'll run with that one for the rest of their sign. Now that I have four on screen, I'm actually curious, which one do you guys think is the best? So if we go one is the top left and then two is the top right, three is bottom left and four is bottom right, tell me one, two, three, or four in the comments because I'm curious. I have a favorite, but I don't know if it's the same as you guys. But yeah, essentially at this point, you can just keep playing with it until you're happy with it. And then once you have one chosen, essentially what I do is I just press print and I use my uh, design to get it onto a sign even bigger. On Illustrator, you can even change the size of the artboard so that it's the exact size of your project and you can scale things to 100%, which makes things really, really easy. There are so many applications for digitizing your lettering, so hopefully this video simplified the process for you and made this really easy to understand. Personally, I use this method all the time to prep my design and then I print it out and I do a chalk transfer, which is actually the video I'm gonna link you to next. So I would love it if you would hit like if this one helped you out and then go check out the next one and I'll see you over there.